Hi, this is Ryan Coltis with MCS, Microchip Computer Solutions. We're an IT consulting firm in Springfield, Illinois. I'm going to be taking a look at Windows 8 Professional from the aspect of a business user. Uh, this is the start screen. This uh, uh, PC is joined on to our office domain. That's the way probably most business users are uh, used to having their sign-in. Uh, you can also actually sign in through Microsoft Cloud or through the, the PC locally. Uh, as we get in here, we'll take a look, and we have this new start screen called Modern UI. And everything's just a little bit different here. Let's try just um, scrolling back and forth. If you scroll up and down, you can see a list. I've got Office applications, a few other things on here. Um, let's take a look at Internet Explorer. This is going to be the Windows UI version of Internet Explorer. The first thing you see is it pops up, and you see the whole screen just filled with Internet Explorer. Uh, of course, MSN is a normal start page. You scroll up and down, you have nothing but your browser. Um, now, you know, you can click around with, with links and it kind of goes places, but as you scroll around, it takes up everything. So what if we want to manually type in an address? You know, we try to go to the top, we click around, you know, scroll everywhere. It doesn't very seem very intuitive. Actually, what you have to do is you right-click, and that will bring up your, your menu, and you can go ahead and, you know, go to a new website. Um, takes a little bit. Um, so we'll just do a Google search for test, and I want to show you tab browsing. If I do a middle click, um, that should bring up a new tab, and it does. But where to go? <laughs> you're uh, you're kind of you kind of stuck there. You have to right click, okay, go up, click on what you looked at, and there you go. So it's kind of a weird interface. They're trying to it looks like they're trying to save some pixels on real estate, which might be fine if you're on a tablet, but using it on a desktop PC or workstation, uh, it just seems a little bit clunky. Uh, now the other thing, let's say we're done with Internet Explorer, we want to go on to something else. You know, there's no X or anything up here. You can kind of click around, even if you right click, it just brings you some more, you know, your tabs and brings you more information on the browser itself. So if you actually want to get out of here, uh, initially when I started using Windows 8, the only thing I would do is hit the start menu, then bring me back to my start screen. Um, but if you actually want to close out of the app, um, there's a, a couple ways to do that. You can do it through hitting Alt F4, and that'll close it down. That's been in Windows forever. Not many uh, regular users even know about it. Or what you actually have to do, and I had to look this up because I couldn't figure it out on my own. Put the cursor at the top of the screen. You see how a cursor changes to the little hand icon? Grab that and drag it all the way to the bottom of the screen, and that's how you close out of your app. So it doesn't seem very intuitive in there. Uh, kind of speaking of things that aren't intuitive, what if you need to restart your P PC uh, for whatever reason? You know, you can kind of click around and look and, um, you know, maybe type power. Uh, that's Windows PowerShell, PowerPoint. Uh, that's not what I want. Um, actually, what you have to do, another thing I had to look up uh, I couldn't find for myself, is get into the charms bar, um, which if you have on a tablet, if you swipe over from the, the right side to the left, it'll come up for you. Um, but here, you know, it's not going to do that. Uh, so you can get through a couple ways. You can hit Winky C, and that'll bring up your charms bar. Or if you go uh, in the upper right or lower right corner, there's just this barely any space for it, that'll bring it up. And then from there, you can go to Settings and Power, and you can re sleep, shut down, and restart your computer. So once you get used to it, it's not too bad, but as far as the users used to Windows 7, uh, it's not very intuitive for them. Uh, now let's take a look at another program that doesn't run um, for the majority in uh, the modern UI, say Firefox. That's my default browser. A lot of the people use Chrome, um, but we always recommend to our customers that they not use Internet Explorer, uh, certainly. And <laughs> it doesn't seem like it wants to load up here, so let me try it again. Huh, that's weird. So it's asking me default browser. So yeah, I want to make this my default browser because I don't really care for um, Internet Explorer much myself, so now it's my default browser. And this will work mostly the way it does um, uh, anything else. Um, you just surf the web, you open up multiple tabs, everything's nice and familiar. Let's go to our website. Oh, maybe not. Uh, and everything looks fine. But the problem here is you're on your desktop interface, but there's no start menu anymore. You know, normally you go through the start menu and see your recent programs and everything. If you want to get back and open another program that's not pinned to the desktop, you have to hit the start button, go back to your start menu, and go from there. 
The other thing is uh, is settings are very difficult to get to. Let's say you want to adjust your mouse settings. You know, normally on Windows 7, you hit the start menu, you just start typing. Uh, here, I'll start menu, mouse. No apps found. Uh, on the Windows 7, that would have just taken me right to the where I needed to be. Actually, what I'll have to do is type control panel, get in the control panel from there, I can go mouse and I get all my mouse settings. So it's actually making things a little bit more difficult even for the administrator who gets into a lot of settings to, to change things. Um, you're adding extra steps and multiple screens, uh, which is not a very good uh, design at all. So let me go back to our uh, start screen. I don't know if you notice the difference here, but on Internet Explorer, the icon for that is different. That's no longer a metro icon, but a desktop icon. And that's because I changed my default browser to Firefox. So Internet Explorer no longer opens up in the Metro or modern UI interface, but instead loads up on the desktop. So that's a little confusing. I don't really understand why they do that, but they do. Um, so that that's a little frustrating. So let me go back. If we are uh, also in our, our modern UI interface and we're you know launching programs, Excel, and uh, you know it pops you back in, and uh, there's not a lot of continuity for. Uh, opening other programs. Let's say I want to open another, you know, Word or something. Go back to the Start menu, find Word, open it up. Or from here, I remember I don't really want to open up Word. I want to actually do something on my desktop. You know, switching back to the desktop, you can either click the desktop icon there, or in the upper left-hand corner, there's just a little tiny area. There's like only a few pixels, like 16 pixels, where you can click up there. If I can maybe find it there. And that brings you back into the desktop. So once again, it's not very intuitive. Um, uh, there's a lot of the underpinnings, though, of, uh, of Windows 8 actually are very good. It boots up faster. Uh, it's got some uh, improvements in the core that actually uh, increases the reliability of it. It's just the interface on it that's so terrible. You know, this is um, you know June 13th. I'm recording this. And hopefully in the fall they'll release Windows 8.1, which is rumored now to have a, a start button, uh, not a start menu on the desktop side, uh, and that'll actually help you get into a few things. But we'll see kind of how that pans out. There's just a lot of issues here um, with the user interface and not necessarily compatibility that just make it not suitable for a business workstation where you're going to be working eight hours a day, uh, five days a week on. Uh, on an everyday doing content creation. It really feels like it's meant more for the consumer and they've kind of left the, the business user as an afterthought, uh, which is unfortunate in my opinion.